Now we move on to a very special database which is AWS Key Spaces. A scalable, highly available and managed Apache Cassandra compatible database service. So many terms to discuss isn't it? So let's get started. So Amazon Key Spaces for Apache Cassandra is a scalable, highly available and managed Apache Cassandra compatible database service. <laughs> There's a lot of terms isn't it? So I'm not sure how many of you have used Cassandra before. But don't worry, I'll give you a small introduction to Cassandra so that you can relate to while using Amazon Key Spaces. So don't worry about that. So just like we have RDS for Postgres, we have Key Spaces for Cassandra and you will get to know why this is called Amazon Key Spaces. So it's more about Cassandra than about Amazon on a lighter note. So, so what are the advantages of using Key Spaces? So first of all, you don't have to provision, patch or manage servers. Secondly, you don't have to install, maintain or operate the software that is Apache Cassandra. So in simple terms, it is easier to manage Cassandra and having less overhead on managing the clusters and nodes that you might have to do when you host Cassandra yourself for your applications. And the other important advantage that we have here is Amazon Key Spaces is serverless. So you pay for the resources that you use and the service automatically scales tables up and down in response to the application traffic. That's easy, isn't it? Moving on to the additional benefits of using key spaces. So first one is compatible with Apache Cassandra. So as a developer, we must or we make use of Cassandra query language and we use the drivers to work with Cassandra, isn't it? So here as well, it becomes very easy because you need to just change your connection parameters to work or to connect and work on the data that we have. And the next one is no servers to manage. As I already told you that you don't have to provision patch or manage servers. And secondly, you don't have to maintain or install or operate the softwares that you have. So in simple terms, it is easier to manage Cassandra and having less overhead on managing the cluster. Third one is performance at scale. This means that based on your demand, the capacity scaling becomes very easy because it is automated and managed by AWS. So we can create applications with virtually unlimited throughput and storage that can serve thousands of requests per second without the need of capacity planning but you pay for what you use. So highly available and secure for high availability, Amazon Key Spaces offers a 99.99% availability SLA within an AWS region. And for security in Amazon or AWS Key Spaces, the tables are encrypted by default and replicated three times in multiple availability zones. So remember these points very carefully. So if you're using Amazon Key Spaces, it's very easy for you to work with Cassandra because Amazon Key Spaces makes it easy to migrate, run and scale Cassandra workloads in the AWS cloud. And if you have worked on Cassandra, you know that we create Key Spaces here instead of databases. And here as well, you can create Key Spaces and tables in Amazon Key Spaces without having to worry about deploying the infrastructure or installing any software. So having said this, I would any day use Amazon Key Spaces given that I don't have to set up the Cassandra cluster and manage the nodes, its consistency and installing drivers for Python. Yes, I would. I might be joking on this one, but yes, if there is an easier way to work with Cassandra, why not? So let's look at the high level architecture for Apache Cassandra here. So Cassandra in simple terms is an open source NoSQL distributed database. So if you wish to work with Cassandra, you can install it on your machine or even by using Docker. So if you see the third point here that Cassandra actually works on horizontal scalability and I'm sure you guys must be aware of what horizontal scalability is. So it's like, if you don't know, like it's like uh, if you're hungry, you don't take a 12 inch sub, you take two six inches sub from the subway. So here also you keep on adding more nodes in order to scale it to meet your demand. So if you see here, we have four nodes and one installation is equal to one node or it is considered as one installation is considered as one node and each node that we have is connected to each other. So it will be working as a peer to peer architecture. So here you don't have a single point of failure. Each node that we have here is capable enough to perform database operations and more so without the need for a master node. That is why it is known to be a distributed architecture. And Cassandra node communication works on a gossip protocol. So I hope that you must be aware of what a gossip is. Yes, we do a lot of gossip. So if I am a node, I need the information about other nodes. So in a gossip protocol, every node gossips or talks with up to three other nodes every second to find out the status of other nodes. So if you need more power or performance in Apache Cassandra, 
you can add more nodes to that to increase the performance and when you create tables in Cassandra and for every table that you see the first value the first field is the partition key and why is it called a partition key is because the hashed value for this is used is used to determine which node the data should be stored in so we have the table here the first field that you see of the column actor we have john sam sam goldie these are the values and its hashed value is used by the partitioner to create the token and in turn determine where the data has to be stored so if you see here we have node 2 which has the id 62 or the token value 62 node 3 has 50 and 50 and similarly we have node 1 which has the id for the partition key as 45 so this is the way that it has been partitioned and it has been stored so now let's talk about how we can work with cassandra using cql so if we wish to create a key space you can call it like creating databases so create key space and you provide the name of the key space here i have given movie buff with replication is equal to class colon simple strategy and the replication factor is three so you know you must be thinking what is replication and what is a simple strategy and replication factor so don't worry we will talk about that so now let's create our table that is movies so create table table name that is movies and i have provided five fields here actor that is text movies text budget text here also text director is also text basically that is the name so here you can provide the data types and the columns that you want and then the important part is the primary key so here if you see i have a primary key that i have created that is actor movies and budget so this is the combination of keys that i have used to create the primary key and if you see here in cassandra we can create compound primary keys create columns so that you can query and return sorted results so sometimes what happens is there can be repeated values in a column so you can have multiple columns and pair them together to make your primary key and there are a few concepts that you need to understand one is primary key that you know already by now the primary key is a key to indicate one or more columns which we can make use of to retrieve data from the table next thing is composite primary key or compound key for example i want to take two keys and make them the composite key like i have here actor and movies so these two together can make up for my composite key and the first part of the key is called the partition key which is responsible for data distribution across your nodes and your composite key will be used for sorting the partition key is the same as the primary key when the primary key consists of a single column and the second part that you see in this case actor is the partition key and movie and budget are the clustering keys and for a simple primary key like if suppose i want to have one value itself so we can make use of a unique value so in this case we can make use of something like a uuid as a primary key so that will be unique now that you have some idea about cassandra this is not going to be more about cassandra but about key spaces so let's discuss on that if you see the design here as a developer it actually works on our part because uh, with cassandra we have ways to connect to the database so we can make use of the cassandra driver or we can also make use of the sql sh from our instances and also we can work using amazon key spaces console and with amazon key spaces you get two throughput capacity modes for reads and write that is one on demand and provisioned so either you can choose how many throughputs you need and you can scale it as per requirement on demand but more users often prefer using on demand if they are not sure on how their traffic fluctuates because in on demand you pay only for the reads and writes that your application actually performs so that's a better way to do it but the only thing that you have to keep in mind is you can change the capacity mode of your table once per day and amazon key spaces stores three copies of your data in multiple availability zones for durability and high availability and as you can see here we have encrypted storage as encryption at rest is automatically enabled when we create a new amazon key spaces table and all the client connections require tls security so that's a very good thing so let's talk about a few points that we need to keep in mind when working with amazon key spaces so amazon key spaces actually supports cassandra query language or sql api version 3.x 
And if you are working with 2.x, then don't worry, it is backward compatible with version 2.x. So that's a good thing. And you can run your Apache Cassandra workloads on AWS using the same Cassandra application code. So you don't have to change much when you're moving to key spaces. And Amazon key spaces also supports all commonly used uh, Cassandra data plane operations such as creating key spaces, tables, reading data and writing data. So this is also very helpful for us. And the best part here is that Amazon key spaces is serverless. So you don't have to provision patch or manage servers. So there are very less things to worry about for the users when it comes to managing the cluster. And for me, the biggest advantage I would say is that the settings such as replication factors and consistency levels are configured automatically to provide you with high availability, durability and single digit millisecond performance. So this is something that I am really looking forward to. And most of the times as an admin, it's a tricky job to have replication factors and consistency levels in place. So if it is done automatically, then it's just an awesome thing to have. So the next important thing for us is to understand that how replication factor and consistency level works. So imagine a scenario where you have six jar of cookies. So imagine a scenario where you have six jars of cookies that we love to eat and you have five rooms. And you cannot predict which room is going to get locked at any given point of time. So storing all the cookies or cookie jars in a single room will be a very bad approach, isn't it? So what we do is we take one cookie jar each and store them in three rooms individually. And in this case, if room one gets locked, then also we have two more rooms from which we can get the cookies out and eat. And this is just an analogy in similar ways for your data that is written or updated to key spaces. And Amazon Key Spaces stores data replicas on multiple nodes to ensure reliability and fault tolerance. So that's a very good thing. The total number of replicas for the key space across a cluster is referred to as the key spaces replication factor. Okay, so remember this point very carefully. The total number of replicas for a key space across a cluster is referred to as the key spaces replication factor. So if the replication factor is one, then there is only one copy of the row of your table on the cluster. Okay, that's a sad thing, but yes, that is one way to put it. So if the replication factor is two, then two copies of each row is on the cluster where each copy is on a separate node. Similarly, replication factor of three means that there are three copies of each row and each copy is on each of the different nodes. So I want you guys to focus on the image here and think of these four nodes that we have Okay, node 1, node 2, node 3 and node 4. Consider each of them as the replica node. And remember the replication factor that you set should never be more than the nodes that you have in the cluster. So for example, if you have four nodes, the replication should not be more than four. In ideal scenarios, we should have three or four nodes for our cluster. And based on replication factor, we determine the consistency and, and when it comes to Cassandra, you will hear this word quorum consistency a lot, which will ensure how many nodes will respond when, when we set the read and write consistency. And there are types of quorums as well. And the way we calculate quorum is the sum of the replication factors, as I mentioned here, is the sum of the replication factors by 2 plus 1. So let's take an example here. We have two DCs with replication factors of three. So if you can see DC1 is RF3 and DC2 is RF3. So quorum will be three plus three by two plus one. So that is six by two plus one, that is four nodes. Two nodes down in the cluster for its read and write consistency. So consistency here will manage the availability and the accuracy of the data upon which your read and writes are based on. And the other thing that you see here in the create space is that replication strategy or the strategy that you have is class that is simple strategy. So simple strategy works if you're working with multiple nodes in your data center. And similarly, we have local and network topology strategies. So you can read more about them. So, but this is more about working on which strategy you're going to use based on what is the type of architecture that you have. Now let's see some of the consistencies with both read and write. So the first one that we have is the table that describes the right consistency levels from strongest to weakest in that order. 
So the first level that we have is all. So this provides the highest consistency and the lowest availability of any other level because the data is written to all the nodes then only it is said to be successful even if one of the nodes fail then the right operation actually fails okay so these values that i'm saying all the levels that i'm saying right now are for write but they transpose equally to the read consistency so if you understand what how and exactly the write works then the read is oppositely similar so don't worry about that and the next one is each quorum so this also provides strong consistency but let's suppose you have three data centers and you have three replications then it says it should reach quorum on each of the data center so it means so it means that out of three at least two should be successful for the write so let's suppose you have three data centers and there are three replica nodes for each of them so when we say that it should reach quorum it means that so what it means is that if it has a replication factor of three for each data center then you have to calculate like three by two plus one so it will be two so at least two should be having the proper data then only it will consider it as successful and each quorum means each of the data center should have the quorum value or the quorum attained next one is quorum so here based on the example three plus three plus three that is nine by two plus one so that is five so any five nodes is successful then it is a success the next one is local quorum it means that if you have three out of them one local dc should have quorum that is two nodes so the next one that we have is one so here we need one node from any data center to succeed and the other one that we have similar like uh, two and three so they need two or three to succeed similarly that we have the next one is local one so when you send the write if you get acknowledgement from any node then it is a success and that too from the local data center next is any so this tells us that if it is written on any of the nodes it is a success so i hope you got the point here so all each quorum quorum local quorum one two three local one and any so these are basically like the consistency levels from the strongest to weakest and if you want you can just pause here and read more about this so that you can get more information about it because we have this similar to what we have on the read but the problem here is if suppose you are willing to have the highest consistency there will be a problem with the availability as well so keep in mind that even if you provide the highest consistency the lowest availability is the one that you're going to face so you have to keep in mind both the ways like uh, you can't always achieve for highest consistency because you might compromise on availability and when it comes to amazon key spaces for write consistency amazon key spaces replicates all write operations three times across multiple availability zones for high availability and here it uses the local quorum consistency level so write consistency for amazon key spaces uses local quorum so local quorum means consistency of two from the local data center that is if you have three data centers out of them out of them one local dc should have quorum that is two nodes if you have a replication factor of three and for the read consistency levels amazon key spaces supports three consistency levels like three read consistency levels that is one local one and local quorum so i know that you already know about these but you have to understand that other consistency levels are not supported so you have to make use of these three and as we have already discussed on this one you can read more about this and what we have discussed till now is more than enough for the solution architect but it's up to you and i would request you to go through the documentation as well <music>